And it's time for Monsters and Hamsters, uh, timely dispatches from the southern Vermont and New Hampshire borderlands for all you Vermonsters and New Hamsters at uh, heart and by geography. We have Maria Pesescu with us. She's, she's the executive director of Next Stage Arts Project down there in Putney. And, man, there's been big things happening down there. It's been kind of exciting. Yeah. Nice way to wind up 2015, and we're excited about what's to come. And thanks for having me on the show. Oh, thanks very much for coming. It's a big deal, Next Stage Arts. It had kind of a humble beginning, and now, holy cow. Well, <laughs> thanks. I appreciate your enthusiasm. It is, I, I'm a bit breathless from all of it myself. And yeah, there was, uh, you would, you could say humble beginnings and very organic beginnings, frankly. And I think yeah. that's a key reason of why we have been as successful as, as we have, mm -hmm. because there's nothing imposed about this on the community. It's really come up, as I said, very organically from the community. So in 2010, the well there, there's some history here with the general store in putney uh -huh. which had been like the heartbeat of putney oh, yeah. for many many years a real central gathering place real simple wonderful you can get anything place in the middle of town and it burned down yeah. the whole community rallied to rebuild it lots of fundraising people donating lumber off their land and labor and a lot of energy went into that and then it burned down again arson in both cases uh, which was really adding insult to injury. Yeah. So the town was in mourning and actually gathered at what was, well, at 15 Kimball Hill, which is now the site of Next Stage, owned by the Putney Historical Society, mm -hmm. and had kind of a fundraiser with people from Landmark College and Sandglass Theater and local artists and poets and performers and just gathered together and the spirit was incredible and it caught the attention of a lot of people so a group of five guys from town uh, founded the concept of next stage did some research to kind of get a sense of what would it take to make this space a performing arts facility mm -hmm. performing arts center from the beginning the acoustics have been amazing but there have been a lot of problems with the space, including it wasn't accessible. Yeah, well, we should tell people that it was an old church. Well, right. Yeah, it was an old church. The United <laughs> Church of Putney was functioning there. But it had the attendance had fallen off and the congregation had disbanded. So it was really not being used except for the occasional AA meeting. Or um, there was a strong tradition, which continues and will continue, of community suppers, right. where different groups in the community would prepare a meal and people would come and donate what they could. But otherwise, it was really not being used. So um, in partnership with the Putney Historical Society, Next Stage Arts Project was formed and decided to start programming in the space, get a sense of is there community interest in making this a real community cultural center. And indeed there was. And there very much was. So I actually was um, invited to be on the board. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first board members of the project. And totally loved the group of people involved. I mean, it's really quite a remarkable group of people, not just because of a combination of passion and mission and commitment to community and an incredibly strong network of connections outside the community, which has really helped us a lot in our booking and programming and who we've been able to get to the space initially. Yeah. Now there's somewhat of a snowballing effect where people are hearing about it. Artists love performing there. They're telling their friends, they're telling their agents, and more people are contacting us um, who want to perform there. Oh, before we get too far away from mm -hmm. it, uh, should we honor those founders by naming names? Yes, absolutely. So the original founders of the project are Billy Strauss, John Burt, Eric Bass, Barry Stockwell, and Chip Greenberg. Good work, guys. Yeah, really. All of whom very much continue to be involved in the project. Chip Greenberg is an architect and actually was selected in a very competitive process um, to be the architect for the renovations that we have just completed phase two of. And Eric Bass, of course, is the founder and director of Sandglass Theater next mm -hmm. door. And um, Barry Stockwell is a well-known musician oh, yeah. from the Stockwell Brothers and multi-talented, wonderful guy. Billy Strauss is uh, a nationally renowned 
sound composer and engineer, quite a remarkable fellow. And John Burt is a totally remarkable guy who is involved in, he's one of the producers of a number of Broadway productions. He started an arts foundation in Cambodia. He's really got a global wow. perspective on production and philanthropy and wonderful. So that gives you a sense right there. Good gang. Yeah, great gang. And they brought you on as a, a board member. Right. And you have a really strong background that just dovetails into this thing, too. Well, I have been involved in cultural events production all of my career. My mother was an actress, actually, so I grew up um, with getting that buzz from New York yeah. City theater. Um, she was on Broadway and with New York Shakespeare Festival, New Jersey Shakespeare Festival, the cool. Jewish Theater. Uh, so that sense of groups of people coming together and the excitement of a cultural experience. And also, f for me, this is relevant, mother, <laughs> mother actress, father psychologist, me youngest child, so I'm always trying to kind of bring it all together. <laughs> um, and the experience of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts mm -hmm. and the sort of spiritual if you will, transformation that happens when an audience is sharing something, I think is, um, you know, we're not a church anymore, but I think there is some carryover of that sort of collective s sense of spirituality. I feel that when a show is working, sure. you know. Like, it's like the Meeting House shows for Roots on the River. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. People will recognize that experience. And that's what's so fun, is I feel like that's what we are recreating in a lot of different ways at Next Stage. Uh, so I started as a board member. The whole the project is has been all volunteer. Yeah. We got some funding at the end of 2012 Yay. to hire professional leadership. And I wasn't, frankly, even thinking about it for myself because I have other work. I'm a I've done a lot of different things in my career, and I'm also a communications consultant with a firm based in Boston, and I still do that. Mm. But for a number of different reasons, it's sort of started to dawn on me that my background really is very well suited to this yeah. challenge. My commitment to the community is absolutely paramount. And so, again, we had a uh, a, an application and interview process, but I did go for it and I did get the position. So I've been the executive director since 2013. I'm the only full-time person. I hire some other um, folks. Barry actually, Barry Stockwell is our venue manager, so mm -hmm. he does a lot of coordination and work with the advanced teams of artists who are coming and good choice there many other things. Yeah, and Barry is also on the board of the Putney Historical Society. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. And uh, grew up in Putney and yeah. very rooted in this community. And Julian McBrown is another awesome person involved in the project. He's on the board. He is a bass player and a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. And so he is really our technical guru. He, he does a lot of the sound for our shows, and he's, he's wonderful. So, yeah, I've been functioning as executive director since 2013 and um, throughout this capital campaign and yeah. process to renovate the space. You've shepherded it through a lot of good, deep changes. Thank you. <laughs> but, it, but it's retained its character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we, that's, we are about celebrating and reflecting the community that we come from. And, uh, and sharing that, you know, ultimately, I, this is not an official position, let me be clear, but I love the idea of uh, someday having a national broadcast that comes out of Next Stage. It, it would be a very, very different animal from Prairie Home Companion. Yeah, yeah. But in some ways, to share the character of that local community mm -hmm. uh, nationally, that would be really fun and I think really connecting well to what Vermont stands for yeah. in the country on many levels in terms of environmental innovation and farming and food movement and cultural and progressiveness on a lot of levels. So mm -hmm. That's something that I'll want to stay in touch with you about down mm. the road when that starts coming along because I'm, I'm very interested in that as well. Uh -huh. uh, how does Next Stage celebrate and reflect the community? 
In terms of the programming that we do, we have a very, very broad continuum. In fact, it's as broad as we want it to be, which in includes featuring local performers, mm -hmm. in including, uh, just to reference some very recent performances, uh, kids in the community. We just had, we in our first week of reopening, we had six different events, very different from each other, but it included students from the Putney Central School, middle school students, had interviewed as part of a project that was supported in part by the Vermont Folklife Center mm -hmm. and Evie Lovett and Leah Tofalon and were, were central people from Putney who shepherded that through. So it was Putney Central School students who interviewed elders, mentors in the community. Oh, nice. And they made films. They, it was mostly photographs, but they put it together in sort of short five-minute films. And then they showed the films at Next Stage. The place was packed with all ages, including the very well-known, iconic mentors mm -hmm. in the community, uh, with kids asking, you know, these 80-plus-year-old people who grew up in Putney, so what did you do for fun? Or, you know, just very, very organic questions. Um, so it was multi-generational. It was packed. We had people from the Folk Life Center there, the executive director and staff. And then the kids got up on stage at the end of the film and were interviewed, did a Q&A yeah. um, with the audience. And the spirit was just fantastic. So that's an example. That's local on many levels. It's the kids, it's the elders, it's fostering connection between mm -hmm. generations. And it's giving it a professional venue to share that. It's not the, the school auditorium, which is like the cafeteria. Right. You know, it's stepping out and saying this is something the whole community can hold and that honor. That is just outstanding. And another thing involving actually the same, the Putney Central School kids, we work with a lot of different schools, but sure. this happened to also be Putney Central School. Um, the principal of the Putney Central School, her Pelletier, is also a member of our board. Um, we had the Putney Central School chorus open for the Groove Barbers. Uh -huh. That's Sean Altman and these fantastic, the original singers in Rockapella coming up from New York City. I mean, they are world class. They are fantastic acapella group. Again, the place was packed, so much fun. But we had the school chorus open and then the they did two numbers at the very end with mm -hmm. them, uh, Lion Sleeps Tonight and mm -hmm. Up on the Roof. And people were just so, so happy. You know, addressing your specific question, how do we reflect the community, we are trying to celebrate the talent that we have within sure. the community. We often have opening acts. If we have a national mm -hmm. uh, talent coming through, we we'll want to give a platform to someone who's local and maybe less well-known. We do lots of other programming um, involving local folks, for example, in just just to sort of set the broader context, we are not just a music venue. We do lots of musical concerts, mm -hmm. Yellow Barn music. Yeah. Um, it does the, also in opening week. We had an 18-person chamber orchestra, the East Coast Chamber Orchestra, mm -hmm. it, which is known as the best chamber orchestra without a director in the country, and they were absolutely fantastic. So the best classical music, all kinds of folk music. Uh, Barry's started Twilight Music. We do yeah. all the Twilight shows now. So that's, you know, fantastic folk, Celtic, um, American roots music. The umbrella is opening. Um, <laughs> jazz, blues. We have Naomi Shelton in the Gospel Queens. Mm -hmm. She was here. She's coming back. So a real range on the musical side. But also we have a theater company in residence, Apron Theater Company. Apron. This again relates to how is this community reflecting the community that's community theater they are fantastic talented theater company and we're thrilled to have them involved with us so we do three full-fledged productions with them a year two-week productions mm -hmm. so that's a great way for someone you may know as your pharmacist to show up <laughs> on your stage and you know people are sharing their talents that way we also have a beautiful surround sound full film setup. Um, so we show films there, 
One thing that we've done quite a bit of that we are planning to continue is to have local people curate films, could be one film, could mm -hmm. be a series of films, and then come and do a Q&A and, you know, do an introduction and a Q&A mm -hmm. after the film. So it could be um, some local farmers who select some films about food and agriculture production, fiction, documentary, a mixture of things. Uh, we had a midwife come and curate a series of films related to mothers and birthing and fantastic discussion from that. Many other examples like that. Did Lou do a blues thing? At and some Lou point? Erlanger, yes, who is a member of our programming committee. Mm -hmm. He's brought some. One, he, Naomi Shelton and the Gospel Queens is through Lou. Lou's a great example of someone who's so talented yeah. himself musically, so well connected, really has this vision and really brings brings that in and has been able to bring and ha and we have some more plans with Lou to bring some great blues Good. talent. Here. You can you can hear uh more by Lou every week here on Black Sheep Radio. He has a show under the name Junior X. We're talking about oh the origin and the great stuff that goes on down at Next Stage Arts Project in Putney talking with executive director Maria Basescu. Uh, what, one thing that I definitely want to mention, because I'm so grateful for it and so so aware, I, I'm talking a lot about how fantastic the Putney community is, mm -hmm. and I could go on about that, the, the, the talent and the uh, heart Putney's and a great generosity. Place. It is. But while, I mean, it isn't only Putney, and I, I want to give a very heartfelt nod to Bellows Falls community here, one of the great opportunities that we've had when we were closed for renovations, we were closed for about six months, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to disappear off the radar. And it was an opportunity for us to, to build some collaborations further outside the community. Sure. So we were doing some programming in, in various communities. And we collaborated with Gary Smith and Popolo mm -hmm. for a concert with Anja Duvacott and the Stockwell brothers, actually, back in November. I managed and to catch that. Wow. That's, that's right. You were there. W wonderful show. And the Wyndham Ballroom was, was packed. It's a sense of a real partnership in terms of mission and why we do this work. I mean, Gary Smith is, a, is an example of this incredibly talented, mm -hmm. accomplished musical professional who, you know, how lucky is that, that he chose to come to Bellows Falls. And, um, I mean, I think Popolo is just, you know, you could be anywhere in the world. That it, It's a fantastic yeah. restaurant. The energy that Gary brings, that, that you bring, this radio station I think is fantastic, Wool Radio, um, the Opera House. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. people who have been putting a lot of energy into Bellows Falls for a long time. This is just a really special community, too, and we're happy to, to partner with, with you all. Oh, I, I want to see all the communities banding together. Darn it, we've got so much to offer each other. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. You've got... Main Street Arts is doing fantastic things in Saxton's River and uh, so many great people in Brattleboro doing yeah. doing fine work, you know, from, from the Latches to Hooker Dunham to uh, 118 Elliott Street and Vermont Performance Lab. And, you know, it's just it, it, it's a, an amazing cultural riches that we have yeah. here. And I think the more that we kind of can recognize and support each other, the better. So no more pews. Yeah, no more pews. Um, it's interesting because, so this theater's 1841 was the, or the building, mm -hmm. at 15 Kimball Hill, was built in 1841. We started doing events there in these really old pews with, like, the original horse hair. And <laughs> I won't tell you how disgusting it was when we started to take those apart and some of the things that we found when we were doing that our original we did actually replace the horsehair cushions with some more comfortable cushions <laughs> you know in the in the short term but a lot of thought went into the design of the renovation of the space we did not want to lose the sense of connection of the congregation that you have and when you're all kind of sitting on the same level in pews mm -hmm. even though there was a big uh, aisle up the middle big aisle up the yeah. middle where we were losing a lot of really good central seats. Everyone was on the same level, mm -hmm. and we didn't want to 
give everyone great sight lines, but break up that sense of connection among the audience. Okay. So there's a yeah. lot of discussion back and forth about how to do that. And we ended up getting rid of the aisle altogether in the middle. You have to come in on either side now, mm -hmm. but you are totally connected as a group in the audience. So yes, we have raked seating, which means raised seating, so you're never straining to see over someone's head in front mm -hmm. of you. We also have a lot of flexibility, so we can have 100 seats are, are bolted down, mm -hmm. beautiful, comfortable theater seats that were donated to us by a outfit in New Hampshire. Yay. Um, and Julian and I rented a truck and U-Haul and <laughs> went and picked them up. And But we have movable chairs so we can have as many as 200 people in an audience, but we can also take those chairs out and have a big dance floor. Yeah. And we intend to do lots of events where there's a lot of dancing because there's a strong desire for that. And so, one of those is coming up very quickly. One of those is coming up and it is going to be a show not to be missed, I have to say. So Saturday, January 9th, it's our first show in the new year, 2016. It's uh, someone we've had at Next Stage before and she is out of this world, fantastic. Her, it's Christine Ullman and her band Rebel Montez. Many people may know Christine because she's the lead singer with the Saturday Night Live band. For years. For many years. And she is the, one of the hardest rocking, most... I, I, I've, I've really come to adore her. We have a special relationship with her. I think she's going to be blown away when she comes back to the next stage. And now, she played the last show before... She, she did a, she did a, a dance show, right, was one of the last things that closed us out before we um, stopped. And usually she's come in the spring. Mm -hmm. It's always very tricky with her because she has to schedule things around the Saturday Night Live yeah. tapings. Of course, that rules. Um, but we, we just felt strongly we couldn't think of anyone to better kick off the new year with than, than, than Christine. There are still tickets available. Uh, they're online. I'm nextstagearts.org yeah we're we're gonna pack the house no doubt but people are just we're gonna have this big dance floor we have uh beer and wine and refreshments and it's gonna, just gonna be fantastic fun we also are going to be using for the first time in this kind of you know full-fledged rock capacity our beautiful new sound system mm. and this great lighting i mean it, it it's it's just going to be a great party let's play a track by christine what what should i play well you know one something about christine she's she can be an incredibly hard rocker mm -hmm. maybe we should start with a good you know rock and roll tune but there's another song i'm particularly attached to but maybe we can we can play that afterwards. Sure. How about Love Make You Do Stupid Things? <laughs> I love this one. I think that's, you know, an incredibly fun song. One of the, one of the um, personal story totally makes Christine stand out um, in my heart is the first time we produced her at Next Stage. Uh, it was two days after the death of a very dear friend of mine, and I mm. was pretty heartbroken. And she played the song The Gone of You, which um, totally, I, I actually, I knew that song and I requested mm. it, and she played it for me that night. And it's, uh, it's a heart breaker but it was actually it was very cathartic and healing and uh, i appreciated it a lot so the oh. gone of you is is that on this another disc beautiful as tune. well yep the gone of you is there are actually two versions of it but um the first one mm -hmm. is the um th the second one is kind of a, is it is a little more um arranged it's it's like it's it's called the bonus track after hours and it's just mm. this kind of like it's also beautiful but I would play the first one. Well, yeah, let, let's let's listen to that now okay. and come back. Great.
And we're talking with Maria Bisescu here on Monsters and Hamsters on Black Sheep Radio, W-O-O-L. She's the executive director of Next Stage Arts Project, and we're getting the the lowdown, the skinny, the scoop, mm-hmm. uh, all the details, and exciting stuff, exciting stuff. I'd love to mention a couple, well, say, talk about something about the renovation process and the whole uh, fundraising process, which has really been quite remarkable yeah i want to know more about fundraising (laughs) yes we need to figure that out here at the (laughs) station um and then i just want to tell you a little bit more about other things that are coming up. oh absolutely i glanced at the website a little earlier and a bunch of stuff has been added that i hadn't seen yeah well sometimes you know we have things queued up but until we can kind of sign the contracts we can't always put it put it out too publicly but we're really loading up the schedule with some great stuff what do you got after Christine, one of the things that we do is a literary series. Mm-hmm. So we have, it's called Next Stage Speaks, and we've worked with young poets and accomplished writers. We're, we're pretty excited because on January 24th, Char Denord, who is normally the host of Next Stage Arts, has, uh, and he's a member of our programming mm-hmm. committee and I very involved. I love that guy's name. Yeah. And, and we love his poetry too, and you'll get a chance to hear it because he was just named the Vermont State Poet Laureate. And so rather than him being the interviewer, he will be the interviewee mm-hmm. by Veranda Porch, who is the outgoing Vermont State poet, who's just a phenomenal poet and person. So mm-hmm. that's coming up, which we're excited about. Um, speaking of Main Street Arts, they're going to be doing Jacques Brel is Alive and Well, which they've been touring around. We're going to have them there on January 16th. That touring thing was such a hoot. Yeah. A mini tour of a musical. And you, really, you know, um, David Stern is getting them on the map in that way. He's mm-hmm. got a lot of great ideas, artistic director David Stern. So, yeah, that's January 16th. Okay. Um, and then in February, I'm just giving you some highlights yeah. here, but we're super excited about this. Black History Month um, mm-hmm. on February 13th, Samira Evans and Evelyn Harris oh. are doing a tribute to Etta James and Nina Simone with an amazing backup band. And that is going to be fantastic. That, that's yeah, yeah, that's going to be powerful. Um, and we got Caravan of Thieves. Oh, good. Coming up on February twenty seventh, and that you know it's such a great venue for them because it's it's uh, it's all soul. Uh, let's see, we have a vaudeville show coming up in March. I think that's March twentieth, and Apron Theater mm-hmm. is doing a two week production in March, which other desert cities is the play that's coming up. We have Cheryl Wheeler coming up in oh. April. A big favorite in these parts. Uh huh. Yep. Peter Aguero and friends. He's the host of Moth Radio. Oh, okay. Storyteller yeah. and host, and he's come before. And a lot of these folks. This will be true with Samira Evans and Peter Aguero. They, when they come, they will do workshops in the schools mm-hmm. during the day with kids about storytelling or songwriting, or whatever their specialty is. Sure. And and then public performances at night. So he's bringing some storytellers back with him. Um, that's April 15 and 16. And then Cantrip and Low Lily, another Celtic folk mm-hmm. show. And Yellow Barn will be coming back in May. Naomi Shelton and our Pulitzer Prize winning author Tim Weiner, who wrote the FBI and the CIA and a book about Nixon. And he's a fantastic author. And, you know, other stuff coming up. We got, we're booking well into next year. We have Patty Larkin uh, coming mm-hmm. back next October. And, a lot of theater productions in July and August, and more. We keep keep adding to it, so people should definitely stay on top of the website. I'm pretty we stoked that this there. moth guy is coming again. I know. For I mean, it's it's okay if you listen to NPR people. You don't always have to listen to Wool. Uh, NPR. A lot of the stations have the Moth Hour. There's right. also a Moth Podcast, which is well worth just hit it up on iTunes, and it's very cool stuff. Yeah, Peter, he was fantastic and so we're very excited and he's coming back for two nights because two nights. um because very popular show the point that i just wanted to make about the um, capital campaign and fundraising we've been blown away by how many people and foundations and organizations have supported this effort fairly early on in the mm-hmm. process of fundraising for the capital campaign and the renovation we got a $370,000 grant from Art right. Place America 
And that opens all the doors, doesn't it? It was so validating in a practical way, in a spiritual way, mm -hmm. in terms of giving us validation at a national level and getting the attention of other funders. It was just really phenomenal. We're so grateful to them. And they don't just give you the money. They give you lots of support. Mm. And they're all about connecting you with other um, partner organizations around the country. So they're, they're pretty amazing. But we have received funding. And, and it, it's not, I mean, I have to say, it isn't just that checks have come flying in the door. There's been a <laughs> tremendous amount of work in grant writing and Oh, that's and not the part I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but... 25 different foundations so mm. far. 25 foundations is a lot. Yeah. From local family foundations to national foundations that we didn't have a prior relationship right. with. And hundreds, I think it's about 300 individual donors. And giving with such a generous spirit. Mm -hmm. Not like, well, okay. You know, it's not, it hasn't been at all that sort of vibe. It's been thank you for what you're doing, mm. this is wonderful, and really sort of seeing, I think, what we're about, which is raising everything in the community, right. doing, uh, supporting businesses in the community and supporting kids and education and bringing people together, you know, in, in, in Putney, like in just about any place, there's, people can function, even this small community in silos you know, in your public oh, yeah, school yeah. or your private school or mm -hmm. this side of town or that side of town. And this is a common place to bring people together and break those barriers down. And I, I think there's a lot of good energy that is, um, I believe, in upward spirals. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. um, y you know, I, the other thing that's important to, for Putney and the, the long-term survival of a place like Next Stage is yeah. it has to not only be about and for the local community. We want to be and we actually are attracting people to come from further afield. Oh, and yeah. Boston. Yes, sure. and we're getting people from certainly a regularly a 50-mile radius, you know, the Amherst area and the Keene, southern New Hampshire and Bennington and Hanover. But we are doing more outreach to Boston and New York and more, you know, packaging, if you will, with some of the incredible restaurants locally, yeah. the, the Gleanery and the Putney Inn has reopened. So there's mm -hmm. places there for people to stay as well as bed and breakfast and so on. So we do see Putney as a destination and that that should benefit not only Putney, but the surrounding areas as well. The thing that's going to make it work is for people to come and mm -hmm. I welcome anyone who's listening and uh, you may have a whole variety of cultural tastes and we also are open to suggestions by the way mm -hmm. if there are movies you want to see there or artists and performers who you would like to see let us know because we're um, we, we would love to fulfill those those dreams where we can but I'm sure there's something for everyone there oh, yeah. and it's uh, it's a really wonderful experience to be there in my opinion and many others so um, please come tell people and keep it going and you can always check the awesome website nextstagearts.org for what's coming up and what's going on and you can get a hold of maria and probably anybody else absolutely so the big renovation celebration dance party with christine olman and rebel montez yes january 9th 7 30 yep Next stage, it's easy to find, if, you know, you go into Putney and it's just kind of kitty corner from the general store, which you can't miss. Right. And that's a great feature is how centrally located we are. It's right off the highway. It's right in the center of town. A lot of great places to eat. Uh, show starts at 730, January 9th. and Dance floor. New PA. Great dance floor. Hot great band. Great scene. Beer and wine. It's going to be... Big awesome. hair, big hair. Yes, the, her nickname is the Beehive Queen. <laughs> she has shared stages and show bills with Elvis Costello, B-52s, Bruce Springsteen, Brian Wilson, Graham Nash, Blind Boys of Alabama, George Harrison, Chrissy Hind, right. Sting, Lou Reed, Ronnie Spector, who was her hero, <laughs> Blue Eyed Soul. She's just so so big into that classic rock and soul. Yeah, and I, you know what's so amazing about her is... She has 
performed with her grand, credentials are amazing. She's yeah. performed with the best. She and she performs a lot. You know, she's doing Saturday Night Live all the time. She's and she, her joy in making this music is absolutely apparent. Every time I've seen or heard her, the energy behind it, it just that blows me away. She just seems like she's so into it, and it's uh, it's it's joyful. So let's go out on, what, what was that one we were going to go out on? I think it was the title track, right? Yeah, The Deep End. That's the title track of this uh, album, and it's an awesome track. The Deep End. We've been talking with the executive director of Next Stage Arts right down there in Putney. It's Maria Basescu, and keep up the good work. Thank you. You too, Mark. You too. You too. 